Try one. Just start smoking. Just take one. Just like them. You'll be just like them. Smoking can not only cause bad breath, but also causes teeth to yellow and decay over time. Cigarettes alone contain more than 7,000 chemicals, 69 of those pertaining to cause cancer. Isn't that a scary statistic? Another statistic is that one out of five people die due to cancer. Many people try to quit smoking, and most are successful. However, there are those that struggle trying to kick the old habit. For those that struggle with quitting, Alternatives have been created in order to aid the process. One of these alternatives is actually a little dispenser made by the company Pez. Actually, we became a brand in 1927, and that was the initial marketing campaign and thought behind Pez. It was offered as an alternative to smoking. A lot of the early advertisements, posters, things like that, you would see uh, a burning cigarette with the circle and the slash through it. Uh, and it was no smoking, pezzing allowed was uh, one of the slogans they used for many years. As previously said, alternatives such as e-cigarettes have been produced to deter smokers from smoking actual cigarettes, although they weren't very responsible in their design. Instead of targeting the epidemic of smoking, e-cigarettes just mimic the action of smoking and are chemically compounded in a different manner. A problem is that e-cigarettes are marketing that it's safer, which may appeal to children and start up an incentive in youth to start smoking. I think that it's a really bad habit, but you can't get rid of smoking. Okay. I don't really mind it. If it's a person's choice to smoke, it's their choice. It's bad, but I don't think you can do much about it. I'm talking about they're putting their self in harm's way, so if they die early, I, they can blame themselves. Well, like I said earlier, smoking answers some people's problems, and a, a lot of people have a lot of problems, and smoking, you can find a cigarette anywhere, so it's the easiest solution. You can smoke almost anywhere. They've started restricting where you can smoke, but it used to be very accessible. Um, people do it all the time. And it's hard to stop doing something once you've done it for a long time. Was it hard started? No. Why? Because they're already addicted to it and they have, like, they just, it's like biting your nails, I guess. You're like, when you have a habit, you can't, like, let go of it unless you really try hard. Okay. I think nowadays there's a lot more options and availabilities to quit smoking. I know there's a large physiological aspect to smoking, and I, th I think that's what makes it all the hardest part. But there, with nowadays there are a lot more options and ways to quit smoking, cost effective. It can be if you're not very committed, but if you know you're going to die because of smoking, I think it's very important that you stop. With every bad thing comes things that you can't really help. The fact that cigarettes have an age restriction only makes younger people want to do it more because they feel the need to not have to wait. That's why Europe has uh, less alcoholism rate because alcohol is legal so you don't actually feel the need to do it until you want to, not necessarily because you can't. So the fact that they're uh, marketing to younger generation only instills the fact that younger generations already use it because they feel like they can't. So I think it's a smart way to get in money, not necessarily a good way, but it's a smart way. They know teens aren't going to be able to and they know that if they are going to, they're going to be breaking the law. I don't think you should be encouraging the law being broken, but this is a death, this is a company of death. I think that um, it's sort of, they're sticking to the whole do what you can to get what you want sort of thing. It's not 
for the better of the people, but for the better of themselves. But I think, um, I don't understand why people are spending so much money on tobacco or cigarettes or advertising. A lot of people actually smoke, so I don't know why they spend so much money on advertising. Dollars on marketing cigarettes that everyone already knows exist, so that's a waste of money that can go to a better cause. Well, okay, so I th I don't think the e-cigarettes, like that's the water vapor, right? Um, I think that's just getting people used to smoking, even though it doesn't have like the nicotine and stuff in it, it stills like people are still like, okay, I could still smoke this even though it has water vapor or something like that. It's just like, it's even though water vapor is really bad for you still, I don't think it's like a good idea to do it. That's just a way to put off the harmful effects of cigarettes. Just um, cigarettes themselves have a lot of bad side effects and alternatives only lessen that. Okay. So I think the really only real alternative is to just stop or don't start. In 1948, Edward Haas III introduced a product in order to solve these problems. Being an avid non-smoker himself, he wanted to create a dispenser in which smokers could shy away from their old smoking habits. From there, Pez grew and widened their audience. We the uh, dispenser in 1948. We had a design that looked very much like this. This is when it was still being sold to adults. This was the peppermint. You notice there's no character head on top. These were called regulars. Um, once we progressed uh, in the early to mid 1950s, we started adding character heads on top, similar to this, you know. And this is when we also changed the flavoring of the candy to fruit flavors, and we started marketing more towards children. And you know, we got innovative back in the day and decided this also looked like a Pez dispenser. And if you notice, the cab tilts and the trailer pulls out, and it works exactly like a regular Pez dispenser does. So we've kind of changed some things over the years to, to fit with trends and, and what people are interested in and that's kind of how we evolve. Well, we try not to stay too close to the cutting edge of what trends are doing. We like things that are tried and true. We like things that uh, have established themselves as uh, an iconic figure, character status, and, and we will follow that. We won't hop on the latest trend just because we can. Um, one of our sayings is, you know, just because we can doesn't mean we should. You know, we could have probably sold a million Justin Bieber Pez dispensers, but that doesn't make them right for the brand. You know, going to the moon, we've got astronaut dispensers. In the mid-1970s, we celebrated the bicentennial. We've got Uncle Sam and Betsy Ross and Daniel Boone. And you'll see things progress, you know, characters that, that came about and some of the dispensers that we chose were very much a part of what was going on, uh, you know, as part of, you know, the, the greater country or even the world at that time. As with any company making its way to stores all over the world, propaganda had begun to arise. You know, usually fan-based enthusiasm, if there's not a dispenser for a particular character or uh, event or theme or whatever it might be, fans have oftentimes resulted uh, or have made their own dispensers, I should say. Uh, the one I'm holding, Kiss, is a classic example of that for many years. Uh, there was you know, kiss dispensers. People wanted them, so they would take Wonder Woman and paint it, paint the face to look like kiss. And uh, while we're flattered by you know, the enthusiasm of that, it is an infringement on our brand as well as kiss. So to kind of squash that market for those bootleg dispensers, we actually for the first time came up with our own licensed branded dispensers with the permission and license of kiss. Uh, last year. Hudson let a small problem stop them from growing as a company. They introduced more dispensers in order to tend to their customers' preferences. In the end, Pez created a responsible design in which everyone could enjoy.